Hello and welcome to the How BJJ Works podcast, the podcast where we do a deep dive and explore a concept or topic that was covered in the weekly blog post on the website. My name is Justin and I am your host. I'm a three-stripe purple belt who's been training in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for about seven years. This podcast is mostly targeted at newcomers to BJJ or those who are curious about the sport and would like to learn more before taking the plunge. That being said, all are welcome. If you've been training for a while but just like to listen to people talk about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, please take a seat and stay a while. Today's episode is on what are frames and how do they work in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. During this episode, we're going to cover the basics of frames, how frames are used, the details of a successful frame, why frames are so difficult to learn, and why it's hard to escape even after getting good frames. So we're going to cover those five things. Before we get started, I want to give a quick shout out to somebody... And that is user Ninja Ultra Zord. <laughs> Great name, by the way. Uh, this guy or girl submitted a review for me on iTunes. And I just want to give him a quick shout out and say I really appreciated it. I'm going to read that review uh, really quick so everyone can kind of hear the feedback. So the person just said, I just restarted BJJ and I'm benefiting from the information in this podcast. Usually you just get thrown into training and you're expected to learn BJJ culture by osmosis, which inevitably ends up in mistakes. I'd like to see the podcast start to address meta principles of skill, i.e. not necessarily specific techniques, but things like two-on-one to out-muscle and your first attempt probably won't work and staying heavy on the opponent. Just suggestions. Keep up the good work. So again, thank you very much. Really appreciate the review. Um, I really appreciate the suggestions too, and I love that this is what you want to hear because... This is definitely the direction that I uh, envisioned the website and the podcast to take is not specific techniques, but concepts, strategies, topics, culture, that kind of thing. And I got a little sidetracked with that beginner's guide series, um, but I really wanted to get that out there. And uh, it took up a lot of my free time to get that recorded. But um, now that that's done and uh, in that seven step beginner's guide is is finished in up on the podcast and the website we can move on to some of these other topics like today frames so thank you very much please keep sending feedback keep leaving reviews everyone i really appreciate it additionally i know that there's been a volume issue with the podcast uh, over the last few episodes i got a new mic and i've been playing around with the right levels for that and i usually record uh, my episodes in batch so I apologize if you had to crank the volume and then had your ears shattered by the intro and outro. Uh, I hate that. <laughs> I've experienced that in my own podcast listening. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Um, so I'm, I'm working on that. Hopefully this one's better. All right, here we go. So to go over the basics of frames, first thing we're going to talk about is the context. So generally frames are going to be in a defensive type context. So just know that when people talk about frames and framing, we're usually not talking about on the defensive and framing. We're talking about usually creating space in the context of being uh, in the defensive position. Now, I, I point this out, and I think that this is very simple, and some people are probably going to be shaking their heads wondering why I'm even bothering to talk about this, but I think it's important to talk about because when we talk about frames, especially if you're newer, you may see similar positions from more offensive situations, but it's not going to be a frame. It's going to be something different. So let's give a good quick contrast here. So think about from standing. Let's talk about neutral. So you're in a neutral position. Both people are standing. It's the beginning of a match. Somebody gets a good grip. Somebody starts taking up the space. Maybe they're they're coming in for like a bear hug or kind of thing. You insert your arms to create space to get them away from you. You've just created a frame, right? So you are using your body, the leverage of, of your bones, your structure of your body to create space and you're doing that by what's called the concept of framing. So this is exactly what we're talking about. We're talking about this type of use of our body to create space. All right, so now that we've established what framing is, we're going to talk about how to use the bone structure to do it effectively. So when they talk about using the bone structure, we're talking about aligning the arms or the legs or some part of your body in such a way to where they have to go through a bone. So let's use an example from football. So the stiff arm is very effective. You see people do that. What makes the stiff arm super effective? Well, you're aligning the entire structure of your arm, two bones, and you're creating a frame 
that acts very strong because they have to go through that bone, right? It's not muscle. There's no muscle they're pushing through. It's the density of a of uh, the bone structure. So when you're framing from a defensive position in jujitsu, think about how you can use your bone structure instead of just your muscles. So again, let's use a contrast. So if you are pushing them from bottom, so let's say you're in side control position, they're on top, you're on bottom. Let's say you're bench pressing them, that's using your muscles, right? Bench press uses muscles, but once you extend your arm to full extension, and you have the solid connected use of the two bones of your arm, now you've made a, a frame, right? The stiff arm, the stiff arm frame from football. So that's an example of as you bench press up there, you're using your muscles, and then once you're at full extension, now it's a frame, right? So ideally, you want to get your frames so that you can get that stiff arm type motion first, or you can get frames that, that don't rely only on the muscles, so let's use another example. Let's say we're from side control bottom again, and you're on bottom and they're on top. Now, what if you align your arm in such a way that their, their body weight is resting on your elbow, right? So now it's just that one bone connecting from the elbow to the shoulder, right? So now they're, they're resting on that. You're not using your muscles. You've created that frame. So now you can use both that bone from the elbow to the shoulder, and you can use your forearm to frame out against their neck or something. So their, their chest, you know, their body is resting against the elbow to the shoulder, kind of on the point of there. You have to kind of ride that point, right? There's a little bit of sensitivity and not letting them get past, not letting them slip through. And then you've also got the frame from the elbow to the hand, that you can then frame against their face. So there's definitely different structures here at play. And sometimes you have to use a, you know, a little bit of muscle, of course, to get there, you know, initial energy to get that frame. But once you have the frame, it's important that you do not give it back. And that's gonna bring us into how frames are used, which we already kind of touched on, but we're gonna go in a little bit more in depth. So frames are used to create space. We talked about that. Once you've created the space, don't give it back. We talked about that. Now. The important thing is use that frame to move or escape. So this is the part where a lot of people struggle with, especially when they get started, is they'll get the frame and they'll, they'll just be focused on not giving it back, but they won't do anything with it. Now, when we talk about this concept of not giving the frame back, this is we're, we're isolating a static situation, but truly, when you hit the unpause button, when you hit play, it's very dynamic, right? So we're talking about rolling. So in a rolling context, you get your frame, you're focused on not giving it back, and, and I can tell you, don't give the frame back, but the ultimately, at the end of the day, they're probably gonna get it back if you don't do anything with it, right? So understand that when I say don't give the frame back, I just mean you need to fight to maintain the frame until you get your escape or create your movement or create more space or whatever it is you're gonna do with that frame, right? Understand that eventually you have to do something. So this is something that I struggled with a ton and still do to a certain extent. You have to take a risk. You gotta take a risk to, to make the escape or make your move because if you don't do anything with your frame, then it doesn't matter how good your frame is, they're just going to take it back and you're going to go back to the crummy position of side control bottom or, or wherever it is you're stuck in, right? So to recap, frames use structure to create space. Once you've created the space, don't give it back. Use the space you created to move or escape and then make sure you don't do nothing with your frames. <laughs> just, you know, do something. Even if you fail, just do something. Try and escape. Try to create more space. Try to get your guard back. Whatever it is, you got to take a risk. You got to go. Remember, you're on bottom. You're losing. Whose idea was it to lose? It wasn't mine. You know, you put yourself here. <laughs> you, know, you know, this is your fault. So now you got to get out. Do something with your life. All right. So we've covered the basics and some of the strategy. Now we're going to go into more of the details of what makes a successful frame. And we did already cover that a little bit with the structure and all that good stuff. But we're going to talk about a couple other things. So the first thing we're going to talk about is getting the frame is hard work. And this isn't really <laughs> going to be 
advice so much as a disclaimer, I suppose. So just understand that, again, you're from bottom, you're in a bad position. It's going to take energy to get out of that bad position. And while the frames can help, and the frames will help, in getting good frames and, and knowing the concepts of good frames, while these things will help, it's still going to be a lot of work. And as we already covered before, make sure you're not giving up. You know, don't give up anything what you've already got. And it can be a lot of work to get even a tiny frame sometimes against somebody who really doesn't want you to frame. And you see people all the time, they'll get a little bit, they'll give a little bit, get a little bit, and then they get tired and give up and give it all back. And then they have to start from scratch again, right? Or they just get subbed and then you can tap out and reset. And, you know, that's one way to escape the position, but, you know, maybe not the way we're looking for here. So I've really covered all these points, essentially, you know, getting the frame is hard work. Use the structure of your body. We already talked about that. Don't work hard. Work smart. We already talked about that. Once you get a little piece, don't give it back. Keep getting more from them, right? Keep making them move. Keep making them work. You just need to focus on getting your frames. Keep moving at all times. Never stop moving. Even if it's just the smallest adjustments, just keep focus on moving. And then like we've already pointed out, use those frames to escape. Because remember, if you get all the way to a really good frame and you give up from there and you don't use that moment, to try and escape or try to reset the position or, or initiate a scramble or whatever, and they get that good position back on you again, you just spend all that time and all that energy and all that effort for nothing, essentially. I mean, sure, you'll learn, you know, and, and you're going to have to learn as you go, right? So it's not necessarily for nothing, but you kind of just wasted that energy, <laughs> let's be honest. Moving on to the next section, why are frames so difficult to learn? The concept of frames is one of the core fundamentals you need to develop in order to have a successful defensive game, but it might also be one of the most confusing ideas to initially grasp as a newcomer. Now this is probably because framing techniques are extremely simple, but the concept behind them requires an extremely fine-tuned sensitivity that only comes from practice sparring against experienced resisting opponents. Against these opponents, the difference between a successful frame and a failed frame may come down to a very small detail that happens within a split second. Additionally, it's going to be in these small failures when you are going to learn the most about what frames are and how to frame effectively. So I know earlier I said, you know, you got to do something with your frame, you know, and, and if you get reset, then you wasted your effort. What I'm really talking about with these failures in this context is I'm talking about getting the frame, right? Learning how to get that strong frame. Because once you've got the frame, and you don't do anything with it, that's just a criticism of inaction, right? Of just not doing something with what you have. But in terms of the importance of these small failures while you're learning how to frame, I'm more just talking about all the little adjustments that it's going to take to even get the smallest bite of a frame and work your way up to a better and better frame and create more and more space because there's all these different things that the opponent can do to use those frames against you. And that's where all that fine-tuned sensitivity comes from. We talked earlier about the frame of, say, using kind of, you know, riding them on your elbow, kind of using your elbow and that structure from the elbow to the shoulder of that bone. And, you know, as you're kind of using that and, and tracking their movement with the elbow, I mean, that's a pretty small point, and they could easily roll one way or the other. And all of a sudden, you're in a, you know, arm triangle, right? You're getting submitted. So there are definitely risks and there's definitely a sensitivity that you have to be finely aware of in order to get these things successfully to work. But, you know, you have to try it. You have to go for it. You have to fail to learn. And that's more what I'm talking about here. And the last section is why it's hard to escape even after getting frames. So some people find it difficult to make an escape or attempt an escape even after you get the good frame. And if you find yourself in that spot, which we've already talked about a few times here today, but if you are just having trouble with that, I want you to ask yourself a couple questions. The first is, are you afraid to risk an escape? So if you find yourself afraid to escape, you know, it's possible you're just scared of getting back into a significantly disadvantageous position after all that work it took for you to get this far. And that's completely understandable. That being said, if that's the case, find a training partner that you trust that you can drill this with. So recreate the situation, just jump to the part where you have the frame, you're ready to escape. Now just practice that a million times. <laughs> just practice your favorite escape or any escape if you don't have a favorite. 
over and over and over again. And once you're comfortable with the escape itself, you should feel more comfortable in taking the risk once you've got the frames. So just consider the fact, if you're having a hard time making the escape once you get the frame, just consider the fact that maybe it's not actually the issue with the frames, maybe you just don't have as much confidence in your escapes or your scrambles or whatever. So maybe that's what you need to work on. Now the second thing is, ask yourself, have you, how good are the people that you're rolling against? Now, you don't necessarily wanna make excuses for why something isn't working, but just sometimes you see people get really frustrated that they can't do a specific technique uh, against somebody. And sometimes it's just because they're better than you. And so, you know, there's no shame in that. Um, you know, this is a spectrum of, of skill across an entire board, right? We have skill, age, you know, athleticism. I mean, there's so many different factors on any given moment. Um, and it's even people who are technically less skilled, like at a lower belt or something, maybe they just have a really good counter to what you're doing. So also consider the fact that maybe this this new thing you're working on isn't working against somebody uh, because they're just really good at countering it. So make sure that you're trying this on different people. Um, as with any new technique that you're starting, I always recommend trying it first on lower belts, um, very you know less experienced people. And, and then slowly applying it up the food chain from there. And, uh, and then, of course, uh, multiple partners so that you're not just trying it on one person. Because who knows? Maybe if you just do it on one person and you try it on another, they're going to have a totally different reaction. They're going to shut it down some way you never thought of. So just keep going. Keep trying. Try it against a lot of different people. And don't beat yourself up if you're not getting it right away. Right? Keep trying. Keep trying this stuff. You'll get it. You'll get there. I just wanted to share, um, in a similar vein, I wanted to share a story um, kind of in my own training. So a couple months ago, I was working with a guy at my gym, and uh, and we just drilled frames from bottom. So I, I just worked on this one particular frame from this one particular position from bottom for probably two months straight, uh, you know, two days a week, at least 30 minutes every night, and... Um, and man, I can't believe the difference that made. And God, my arms were so sore. You know, just using muscles that I had never developed um, from very specific position. And, uh, and it was a frame that it was just very weak in my game. And once I kind of realized that it was a problem with this particular person, I just asked them if I could work with them. And, uh, and I grabbed them every night, you know, that we went to training together. And, uh, and at least got a few minutes in. And so if you're having problems with your frames, um, especially if you're having problems with frames from a particular spot, you know, definitely grab somebody. And, and it, even if you're just working five or 10 minutes after class on this kind of stuff, um, you know, that really adds up over time. So I would highly suggest trying something like that, especially if it's a problem area for you and uh, see what it does for you. This concludes our podcast, but I appreciate you sticking around for the whole episode. I hope you enjoyed yourself, and please leave a review or send me a message to let me know what you thought. In order to make ends meet, I do sell ad space on the website. I also promote affiliate links to products that I think are worth endorsing and accept donations through Patreon. If you ever want to contribute, your support is greatly appreciated, but don't feel pressured to give anything that you can't afford to anyone ever. Until next time, tap early, train often, and most importantly, have fun.